How to Sew the Christmas Village Part 2 with four brand new shops. You can also buy kits for Christmas Village Part 1, the Christmas Church and the Manor House at Christmas to complete your set. Cutting out. Take out the panel from your kit and give it a press. You will see that all the pieces for the village are labelled. The labels are above them and all the seam allowances are included. So you just need to cut around each of the pieces and pin the label to the top of each piece on the right side. There are so many pieces it's really important that you remember which piece is which for assembling later. So cut around them carefully and label them. And then they will look like this and put them in piles. So I've got all the farm shop outer pieces in one pile. So you've got the right side, the front, the back, the two roof outers and the base. And then all the farm shop linings in another pile. If you keep them together in piles like this, it's much easier when it comes to assembly. And you can see that I've labelled each of them by pinning the label to the top of the right side. So there's the florist outers and linings the bakery outers and the bakery linings and then the antique shop outers all in a pile and the antique shop linings and you will also need some wadding to give your village some structure adding the wadding the wadding will give your house some structure and it's attached to the lining. So place your wadding, if you're using fusible, place it with the glue side up, that's the rough side. And place all the lining pieces for all the houses right sides up on top. It doesn't matter which way they face when you put them on, but just leave a little bit of gap between each of them so that you can cut them out. And then press them into place. If you've used a non-fusible wadding, then tack them into place. So you can see here, I've pressed them all to place. Then I'm going to cut roughly round each of the pieces, like this. And then once you've done that, you can then trim the wadding so that it's level with the raw edge of the fabric pieces. Again, if you've used non-fusible, then just tack it into the place, but cut the wadding so it's level with the raw edges of each of the pieces. And then repeat that to cut out all of the lining pieces so that each one of them is back by wadding. Once that's done, put them all into piles so that I've got all the bakery pieces of wadding, of lining, all the farm shop linings back by wadding, all the florist linings back by wadding and all the antique shops back by wadding. And keep them in piles like this. Making the pieces. The farm shop, the bakery, the florist and the antique shop are all made in the same way. The following instructions are just for the farm shop. So once you've made them, then you repeat them to make all the pieces. So we're going to start by making the farm shop. I've put all of the pieces for all of the shops into piles so that I can make them one at a time. So let's start by taking the farm shop pieces. Now, if you want the light to shine through the doors, you need to cut out the doors. And also, you'll need to cut out one door so that you can get the tea light inside. So turn the outer piece over. I'm using the farm shop front here. And draw around the outline of the door using pencil. You'll be able to see it through from the wrong side. But it just helps if you draw the line in place so that when you're sewing, you can see where to sew. Now, once you've done that... You need to mark a turning gap so that you can turn it right sides out. So fold one side in half to find the centre and measure and mark either side of this, three quarter of inch either side, so that you leave a one and a half inch turning gap on one side. Now go through your pieces to find the matching lining please. So I've got the farm shop front lining and the sharp farm shop front outer. I've kept the labels in place, but you'll probably find it easier if you remove the labels and pin them to the wrong side. So pin the pieces together so you've got the outer and the lining and pin them right sides facing, matching all the raw edges all the way round. So pin it together at the corners first to make sure it's matching and then you can pin between. And then because I'm going to sew around the door outline, I'm just going to place a pin either side of the door section just to hold that flat while I'm sewing. That just helps to keep the pieces together. 
If you're not cutting out the door in this section, you won't need to do that. Now start stitching one side of the turning gap and then stitch all the way around that drawn door outline to the other side. There's a quarter of an inch seam allowance and that's in all included. Once you've sewn it together, it will look like this. So trim off the corners. This is to just reduce the bulk so that you have nice, neat, right angle corners when you turn it right sides out. Trim across the corner and then a little bit either side just to remove the bulk of the wadding and the two fabric pieces. Now you need to cut round the inside of the door. So just cut an eighth of an inch inside the seam that you've sewn for the door. So you can see here, I'm just cutting about an eighth of an inch inside all the way round. Then cut off the corners, again, just to reduce the bulk. Be very careful that you don't cut the stitching, but cut close to it to remove as much bulk as you can. And then because the door is curved, cut some little snips just around the curved section, taking care not to cut into the sewing, but just clip through all the layers of the outer, the lining and the wadding. And this will help it to turn right sides out more evenly. Now fold over the outer piece like this and give it a press all the way around. And then once you've done that, you can turn the whole piece right sides out through the turning gap. So I find it easier just to put my fingers through and turn it right sides through. You have to do this slowly and carefully. Now, if you've left the labels in, in place, remove them. But I did find it easier after I'd done this that I actually removed the labels before I sewed it together and pinned them to the wrong side of the fabric pieces. So very carefully, just turn it. It will turn right sides out, but because you've cut out the door, it just takes a little bit longer to pull it all the way through. But it will come out. So I'm just very carefully pushing it all the way through. Once you've got it all the way through, take a turning, I'm using the turning tool, but use a point turner, something not too sharp, but slightly pointed so that you can push out all of those corners. Do this very slowly so that you don't go through the stitching or the fabric. If you push the fabric onto the tool rather than tool into the fabric, you'll find it turns out more easily. So take your time to make sure all the corners are pushed out on the corners of the pieces and also the corners of the door as well. And once that's done, fold the edges of the turning gap to the inside and then you need to slip stitch these clothes. So just use a hand sewing needle and some matching thread and work a slip stitch that joins the outer and the lining together, making sure they're turned under. So all you do is work a small stitch into one side. So here I'm doing it into the lining and then a little stitch into the other side all the way along. It doesn't take very long to do this, but it's worth doing just to hold that closed because when you join all the pieces together later, it's easier if you've stitched this closed at this stage. So it's only a small gap. So work the slip stitches and then work two or three stitches on top of each other just to secure the thread and then you can cut it off. Then I'm going to just cut off the thread that I started with because I left a longer end and then give it a press all the way around so that the seams lay right on the edges. Once you've done that, it will look like this. Repeat that to make all the pieces. So there's the front outer, the back outer, the left side outer, the right side outer, the base outer and the two roof outer pieces. Cutting out the windows. Decide what windows you want to cut out and this will help the light to shine through. You can cut out all of them or none of them or just one of them. To start with, stitch round the outer edge of the window frame like I've done here and also around the inner edge so that you've got two lines of stitching which helps to secure the window. Then fold it in half 
make a small snip and then cut out the window just inside that inner line. About two or three fabric threads is okay. I found it easier to cut in an angle up to the corner of the window and then trim it all the way around. It doesn't matter whether you use small scissors or large scissors, just make sure they're nice and sharp and work very carefully so that you don't cut into the stitching at all, but just up to it. But the two lines of stitching you've worked does help to keep the edge stable so that if any of the stitching is very close to where you've cut, it won't come undone. Once you've done that, then just trim it off to neaten. You'll have to turn it over to the lining side and the outer side and just very carefully trim off the edges so that you're cutting right up to the edge of the inner line of stitching. Obviously, you'll need to cut through the wadding as well, but if you work around it one side at a time, you can trim it off, but you will need to work from the lining side and from the outer side to do this. Now then, give it a the fabric a little pull all the way around the edge because you'll find you've got some loose fabric threads so if you just rub it in slightly with your fingers then you can trim off any of those loose fabric threads so that you've got a nice neat window and then they won't fray and come out later and the two lines of stitching will secure it Once you've done that, that's the window cut out and then you can decide what other windows you're going to cut out. For the farm shop, I cut out the left side and the right side. Now's the time you can add some quilting. This is optional, but it does add detail and structure to the piece. So I've sewn around the edge of the windows and the doors on the back just to add some detail. On the base, I stitched across the lines. That does help to keep the base stable. And on the roof, I stitched every other tile line, but it's entirely up to you what you quilt. Assembling the walls. Place the farm shop front and the farm shop right side together so that they are lining sides facing and match up the bottom edge and the top edge and clip or pin them together. I find it easier to use fabric clips because it holds them together. Now take a needle and some matching thread and secure the thread at the bottom corner. If you leave a long tail and then work two or three stitches on top of each other, that secures it. Leaving the long tail means you, the thread won't pull out and you can clip that off later. So work a few stitches on top of each other to secure the thread and then slip stitch together, but just work into the outer fabrics, not the lining fabrics. So to slip stitch them together, you work like this. You thread your needle underneath the fold of the outer fabric on one side and then over to the fold of the fabric on the other side. This means that you work a small vertical stitch across from one to the other and then a long stitch underneath. So this means that you will only have the vertical stitches showing. Now you may find it easier to sew them either so they're sandwiched together, holding them together or to sew them so they're laying flat. What I do is I work two or three stitches, the slip stitches across, and then I lay them flat and pull the thread very gently to just pull it up so that you can only see those tiny stitches. It's very quick to do, but just make sure you only work into the outer fabric because that helps the, t the pieces to lay at right angles once the whole building is constructed. So by just working into the outer fabric, it leaves the lining fabric looser. So continue slip stitching in this way all the way up to the top. As I said, have a little go to see whether you prefer working with them sandwiched together or whether you prefer working with them flat like I'm doing here. That does help with the pulling up because you can just pull up the thread gently to attach them together. Just make sure that you use a thread that matches the outer fabric and then those little stitches won't show up so much. But as this is a handmade item, it doesn't matter if you can see the stitches. That's part of the beauty of it, that it has that handmade look. Then once you get to the top of the pieces, so on this, this is the top of the front and the top of where it starts angling up onto that right side, pull the thread gently just so that you pull up the stitches so it's not puckered, but the, so the seam is nice and tight. And then work a couple of small stitches on top of each other to secure the thread. And then what I like to do then is push the needle through the seam to the lining side and secure my 
thread here by working two or three stitches on top of each other. By securing them in the lining, then those stitches won't be seen. And then you just snip off the, the thread and that's those two pieces joined together. You can then snip off the starting thread if you left a long length. Now repeat this, take the farm shop back and join that to the other side of the right side outer and then take the farm shop left side outer and join that to the right side right hand side of the back outer so you've got all four four pieces joined together in a line now you need to join them together into a loop and that keep that's all the walls assembled together so again clip them at the top and the bottom it's most important that the bottom edge matches up and then you can adjust them slightly so the top edge matches up. Now I've joined them all together so that's all the walls finished in a loop. Attaching the base. Take the farm shop base and the farm shop front and place them so they are lining sides facing so that the bottom edge of the farm shop front and the top edge of the barn the farm shop base meet up. Make sure the bottom edges are all level and then clip them together. Now obviously with this one I've cut out the front door so what I'm doing to make sure it fits nicely is I'm clipping it together at one end and then at the other end and then I know that the door will be like the door opening will be lying nice and straight. Now you sew the base to the wall, bottom of the walls in the same way as you sewed the walls together. So start off by securing your thread just in the bottom right hand corner, again leaving a length and working a few stitches on top of each other just to secure the thread. Now sew the base to the bottom of the wall, again only working into the outer fabrics, so doing those two small slip stitches. You can over sew these pieces together if you prefer the stitches will be more visible, but you may find that easier when you're sewing the base on. Or another way to do it is to work your slip stitch. So work a, a stitch underneath the lining fabric of the base in one motion and then work a vertical stitch across and under the base. So with the walls, you can work the stitch in one go. But sometimes when you attach the base, just because it's a little bit more fiddly, it's easier to work one stitch at a time. You can then, after two or three stitches, pull the thread gently so that the stitches are lying nice and flat. So just work all the way along until you reach the side of the door opening. Move the clips as you go, but I do find it's easier to use fabric clips to do this. But you can pin them together, but it is best to keep them pinned or clipped together. Otherwise, things can shift about and it won't be such an even finish. So you can see here, I'm working my stitches through one side and through the other. Remember, only into the outer fabric, not into the lining fabric, because the base will lay flatter. When you reach one side of the door, pull up the thread gently so that you pull the stitches, making sure they're not puckered, but so that the seam lays flat. And then work a few stitches on top of each other to secure the thread on one side of the door. And in the same way as with the walls, I then like to secure my thread by going into the lining stitching, because then the final over sewing stitches can't be seen. And then cut the thread. Now you can slip, stitch the two together from the other side of the door. So don't stitch across the bottom of the door. You'll see those stitches. Stop and start stitching. So like you can see here, I've now attached that side. So continue to do this to sew the base all the way around, working on one side at a time. Always clip one side of the corners together and then clip between. Then you can show it matches up. Slip stitch across here. Once you've done that, clip and slip stitch across the back and then clip and slip stitch across the other side. And then the base is fully attached to the walls. So the bottom section of the house is now finished. Adding the roof. Take the two farm shop roofs and place them so they are lining sides facing and then clip them together at one end and clip them together or pin at the other end and then clip or pin them together through the centre. 
Now you need to sew the two roof pieces together in the same way as you sewed the roofs together. So start off by securing the thread at one end and work two or three stitches on top of each other. When you clip these together, make sure that you're clipping the top of each roof piece. If you look at it carefully, you can see which is which, but if you've labelled them, you'll know. The top and the bottom edges are very similar. It's just if you have a look at it carefully, you can see which way the, the tiles overlap each other. And then slip stitch them together through the outer fabric pieces only, in the same way as you did before, by working a long stitch under the outer fabric and then a vertical stitch over to the other side. You can start... I started mine off by having them together and then I lay them flat. It just gave it a slightly neater finish and because this is just two pieces it's actually easier to sew them so that they're laying flat but even if you do it so they're held lining sides facing just lay them flat every now and then and pull up the thread making sure that the seam's not puckered but just lying nice and flat and then continue to stitch the two roof pieces together and it will look like this. So that's your roof finished. Now you can attach the roof to the building. So place the gable end, so the pointed part of the building, with the, this is the farm shop, so it's in the seam of the roof. And then clip at the other end. The edges of the roof will overlap. And it's supposed to do that to give it the realistic effect. So slip stitch together through the outer fabrics only, up one side of the gable and the roof, and down the other side. And then it will look like this. And you can see that the edges of the roof overhang. Now, Repeat that at the other side. So put the pointed part of the gable into the seam of the roof. Clip it. Make sure that the overlap that you've got there is exactly the same on the overlap on the other side. And you can follow the lines on the tiles to check this. Once you've done that and you've sewn the roof together at the two gable ends, you can then slip stitch the top of the walls to the underneath of the roof. Pin it into place first and just make sure that you pin it so that it's the same distance from the top of the roof as you've sewn on the sides. So you can see that either it's in a nice straight line, so pin it together all the way along, making sure that that overhang is the same measurement all the way along. And then slip stitch the top of the roof to the, the top of the wall to the inside of the roof, but make sure that you only work into the lining of the roof so that your stitches can't be seen on the outside. So the stitches go into the outer fabric of the wall and the lining fabric of the roof. And then it will look like this. You can't see those stitches from the outside and the little building is now complete. Now take a little bit of time to press all the seams, lay them flat on your ironing board, every single seam and press it. It will just give a little bit more structure so this is the farm shop finished. You can see I've cut out the door. You can pop your LED tea light inside. Make sure it's an LED one. Turn the switch on so that it fits and then the light will shine out through the door and also any of the windows you've cut out. Now, if you could prefer, you can make these houses, shops into little gift boxes instead or to store things. So sew it together in the same way, but just don't sew the back roof into place and then you can pop little decorations or gifts inside or if you want to make them into houses sew them together as I did with the farm shop. So there's Amber's attic done and the flower pa patch I've left open so I can fill it with gifts. There's the bakery you can see I've cut out the side windows and then the front door and there's the farm shop again. So there they are all in a little row all ready for Christmas.